Okay, so today what we're going to go over is some uh, gastric pathologies, so uh, stomach pathologies. And um, the first one I would like to start uh, off with is the gastritis. So we have two types of gastritis. We have acute gastritis, um, and then we have... And then we have chronic gastritis. So chronic gastritis and acute gastritis. Uh, acute gastritis in general can be caused by many different factors. Uh, what it leads to is some sort of erosion, uh, like a superficial erosion of the uh, gastric uh, mucosa. So um, as you can see, you can just have some little uh, types of uh, scarring here, but it doesn't go through the mucosa, it's more superficial. And many things can cause this. Um, uh, anything that decreases the uh, mucosal barrier protection uh, is going to cause this. So, so this can be caused by some sort of uh, inflammation uh, that's going on. Of course, um, uh, NSAIDs, uh, you know, mostly taken by people with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and we know NSAIDs decreases uh, prostaglandins. Um, which are responsible for a lot of the protective mechanisms. Uh, alcohol can cause acute gastritis. Uh, two of the more interesting ones is going to be Curling's and Cushing's. Uh, Cushing gastritis. So in Curling's, um, this is due to most, most burn patients. So burn patients will um, have decreased plasma volume and so then they tend to have uh, acute gastritis and Cushing's patient due to some type of uh, head injury. Uh, head injury increases the vagal output and um, that can increase the uh, acid production and lead to one of these uh, acute gastritis pathologies. Uh, curling, the way you memorize this one is like you get uh, burned with a curling iron and just remember that Cushing obviously was a famous neurosurgeon and he probably won't discover this as well uh, and so that's an easy way to remember that. Um, now let's look at the chronic gastritis. So chronic gastritis obviously happens over a long period of time. Uh, there's two main types. Uh, type A, which is autoimmune, and type B, which is bacterial. So it's caused by uh, Helicobacter pylori. Um, now we're just going to go through them real quick and just kind of look at the differences and compare them off of each other. So as far as the location, um, the autoimmune occurs more in the body, whereas the H. pylori uh, is caused in the antrum. Okay, and here the type of inflammation that you get uh, here is going to be mostly neutrophils, uh, and here we're going to have macrophages and lymphocytes. Now, if you look at acidity, oh, actually, sorry, um, that's not correct. Uh, the autoimmune obviously is going to have more macrophages and lymphocytes, whereas the uh, H. pylori is going to have more neutrophils. Now, let's take a look at the acidity. Um, in the autoimmune, obviously, you're destroying the, the parietal cells, so your acidity is actually low. And here, H. pylori is going to cause an increase in acidity. And so, obviously, that's going to have a response with gastrin. Because, because the acidity is low, that's going to stimulate more gastrin. And here, the acidity is actually high, so it's just going to... Uh, decrease uh, gastrin. Now uh, there is a difference in type of lesions. Uh, here since gastrin is involved you have more of a neuroendocrine lesion and over here uh, you will get uh, gastric polyps. Um, now in serology uh, autoimmune is going to gonna have antibodies against parietal cells whereas here you will have antibodies against uh, H. pylori in, in the serology. Um, sequelae um, here is going to be most likely going to be atrophic because you're sloughing up all the mucosal membrane. You're going to you can get pernicious anemia or megaloblastic anemia because of the decrease in, uh, intrinsic factor, and it can lead to a carcinoid type of uh, syndrome. Uh, here, uh, on the other hand, we can get a peptic ulcer can develop or it can further go on to become an adenocarcinoma. Associations, uh, H. pylori associated with po poverty 
and in rural areas, whereas um, here it's, it's associated with other autoimmune conditions is, such as Hashimoto and uh, all of those. Um, next, before we get into, oh, and just real quick, what does uh, H. pyridoid look like? It looks like a common shaped st structure with, uh, you know, a polar flagella. Okay, so now uh, before we get into peptic ulcer, um, I want to first just cover some of the other pathologies that you can see with. Um, um, the stomach. So this can, one of them is called uh, uh, Manipriere's disease. And what Manipriere's disease is, is, is going to be an increase in uh, uh, TGF alpha. And this leads to gastric hypertrophy. And they say this is, it becomes so, hi so hypertrophic that it looks like the gyra of the brain, also known as cerebroform. Okay. Um, also, you get decreased protein uh, because it's it's uh, it's you're losing it in the uh, enteropathy, and it you can, it can it's precancerous. It can lead to adenocarcinoma. So this is uh, generally metabolic disease, and the other one is going to be Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Uh, Zollinger -Ellis, Ellison syndrome is a tumor of gastrin, so it's a tumor of the uh, it's called a gastrinoma. It's a tumor of the G cells, um, and it can either be from the small intestine, or it could be from the pancreas as well. So either of those. Um, and what it's going to do is going to um, obviously stimulate the parietal cells. So you have increased parietal cells up to five times as much. And when you stimulate the parietal cells, obviously that's going to um, uh, increase your uh, Acidity, um, and so of course, and that's also going to increase the mucus level to protect itself from the acidity, um, and this can obviously lead to uh, duodenal ulcers uh, and um, and it can also of course lead to chronic diarrhea. So that's going to be Zondra Ellison and uh, Minetvera's disease. Uh, let's continue on further. Uh, let's take a quick look at H. pylori. Sorry, peptic ulcer disease. Um, you can have two types of uh, peptic ulcers. You could have duodenal peptic ulcers and you can have gastric peptic ulcers. Um, one of the most important distinguishing features is uh, association with meals. So with you know, it actually decreases with meals. And oftentimes the patient will get it one to two hours after a meal. And so since it decreases with meals, um, patients will eat more and they exhibit weight gain. Whereas in gastric, it increases with meals because when you eat the meal, you're increasing the uh, acidity in the stomach. And so this will actually lead to weight loss because obviously every time they eat, it's painful. Um, and duodenal also you get H. Uh, it's generally caused by H. pylori and Zoller Ellison, whereas um, gastric is generally caused by NSAIDs, uh, which decrease mucosal protection. Um, these are generally in the if there's in the duodenum, they're generally benign, but in the gastric there is a risk of carcinoma, uh, increased risk of developing uh, carcinoma, and. Um, Special feature duodenal is generally the Brunner's gland, uh, which secretes uh, bicarbonate trying to neutralize the duodenum, is going to be hypertrophied. Whereas the gastric is not hyper hypertrophied, but it does oftentimes uh, occur in the elderly. So let's uh, then focus our attention on how do we treat it. Um, the, um, one of the major drugs is going to be the uh, proton pump inhibitor. Um, there's different uh, types of proton pump inhibitors. Uh, you have omeprazole and uh, lansiprazole. Um, they will irreversibly, which is important, irreversibly uh, block the proton uh, potassium pump that's on the parietal cells. 
Um, and obviously, what is it going to be used for? It's going to be used in um, peptic ulcer disease, Zollinger-Ellison. Uh, you can also use it in some type of, some types of gastritis and esophagitis. Um, toxicities. Uh, if for some reason it increases the risk of having Clostridium difficile, um, which can lead to diarrhea. Also, it decreases magnesium and it decreases calcium, which can lead to fractures of the bones, and it has an increased risk of pneumonia. Okay, um, the other one is going to be H2 blockers. Uh, there's different types of H2 blockers that you can use uh, cymetidine, uh, loratadine, uh, nizatidine, and formaltidine. Now, um, it all ends with D I N E, so you can think dine as you're eating uh, food, and you know, this is what it's for. So, uh, obviously, what do they do? Uh, they reversibly block. Uh, H2 receptors on the parietal cells and therefore they significantly decrease acid production. Um, all of the toxicities are related to cimetidine um, and the other ones are fairly non-toxic. Uh, cimetidine can decrease the androgen levels, so of course you get gynecomastia, decrease libido, impotency. Um, it can also uh, increase the serum creatine and that's because it decreases excretion of it through your kidneys uh, and uh, it, it inhibits cytochrome P450 so it has a lot of drug to drug interactions and you cannot use it on pregnant ladies because it's an abortifacient. So next we have um, prostaglandin. So misoprostol is a prostaglandin agonist um, and it helps uh, it's a prostaglandin agonist and it helps because it's going to depress formation of acid and it's going to increase mu mucosal uh, development. Uh, toxicities, uh, you do tend to get diarrhea uh, and, you know, ab um, and abdominal cramping. And actually, uh, sorry, H2 blockers are not abortifacient. These are abortifacients. And I missed that up. Okay. Um, then we have uh, more of the drugs which protect the lining. Uh, sucrophate and bismuth. Uh, this actually covers the ulcer um, until it can be healed. So this is going to cover the ulcer. Um, and what the thing with sucrophate is it requires a decreased pH, pH so you cannot use it with the H2 or the PPIs and um, bismuth can also decrease the formation of pepsin. Okay. Um, finally with the drugs here uh, we can look at our antacids. So what do antacids do? They just help neutralize uh, the acidity. And this also, uh, of course, leads to decreased pepsin because pepsinogen, in order for to turn into pepsin, uh, must require acid. Um, now, let's look at some uh, common side effects. Uh, with aluminum hydroxide, uh, you tend to get constipation. Uh, and a good way to remember this is the word aluminum. Uh, so if you go alu and then you could think minimum feces. So that's how you can think of it as uh, aluminum causes constipation. Then we have uh, magnesium hydroxide which actually causes diarrhea and the mnemonic for this is MG must go to the bathroom. Uh, besides that, it, it, it does kind of have a more serious effect. Uh, it can lead to hypotension, obviously, which has cardiac uh, problems there. Um, and finally, we have calcium carbonate. 
uh, which obviously can lead to hypercalcemia uh, and you also get rebound acidity here. Okay, so this does it for the treatment and uh, uh, peptic ulcer and, and its treatment. Uh, next, we're going to look at uh, the different types of tumors. Um, well, actually, there's only one type of tumor um, we can get in, this, in, the, in the gastric. So you can get an adenocarcinoma. So this should be pretty fast. Um, interesting thing about adenocarcinoma, the way to recognize it is um, is it has raised lesions. So here, let me put the picture down here. Okay, so um, adenocarcinoma, if we look at it, it looks kind of like a crater, and you have these raised edges right here. Whereas peptic ulcer, if we can compare it, um, it doesn't have those raised edges, it's just, it's just a little dip right here. So this is a good way to tell from endoscopy whether it's uh, uh, adenocarcinoma or not. Now adenocarcinoma is generally ca the causes uh, it has been linked to uh, nitrous amines food uh, and smoked fish. Um, it generally occurs in the antrum and it's, a show, it's associated with linitis plastica which means uh, it kind of like has a leather, leather bottle type of look. Now it, uh, um, the key features here are the metastasis. So there's um, three different types of metastasis that it commonly undergoes. Uh, first is going to be Virchow's, you can metastasize Virchow's node. Um, you can also get a Kuchenberg tumor. And there's also Sister Mary Joseph's. Um, in the Virchow's node, it's just going to go to the left subclavian node. Uh, Krukenberg tumor, you're going to get a bilateral um, ovarian metastasis. And the key thing here is it's going to be signet ring cells. And Sister uh, Mary Joseph is going to be when it goes into the uh, parambilicus.